Welcome to the BB Bash. I'm Jessica Rothstein Berger and I'm coming to you live from Stamford, Connecticut. BB Camp has been a huge part of my life. I was there for three years as a camper and six years consecutively as a staff member. And one of the biggest parts of my time at BB Camp is my friend and cabin mate, Stacy Adgers. After planning many evening programs together on staff, we are the co chairs for tonight's program. Well, shalom all. I am Stacey Van Wagner, formerly Adgers, uh, but perhaps to this crowd better known as the daughter of Kyle Rotenberg. I'm coming to you all the way from Tacoma tonight, making a, a connection from up north. I am very excited to have reconnected with my dear friend, Jessica, um, to share this event. We have a lot of great things planned for this evening. You're going to make connections through laughter with some amazing comedians. Uh, you'll be moved by the voices of the Snyderman sisters who will lead us through tonight's Havdalah services. And for those of you who are registered early, be sure and have your canteen box that has your Havdalah kit program and blue pinwheel as April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And before the night is over, there may be a big announcement coming for BB Camp. I just want to take this moment to thank all of our sponsors for tonight's event, especially to our lead sponsors at the OMETS Lev level, Gerald Blauer, Jeannie Newmark, and the Newmark Family Fund at the OJCF, Gail Schnitzer Romain Fund of OJCF, and to JHC Construction, who have proudly built most of the buildings at BB Camp as we have been remodeling the entire campus for the past 10 years. It has been a challenging year for everyone, and we have all missed BB Camp and its magic. This year, 2021, we celebrate 100 years since BB Camp first began. We have decided to delay the big in-person celebration until next year so we can gather together. But tonight, we come to you virtually to reconnect with one another, to see lifelong friends, from around the world and gather in celebration. I raise a glass to all of you so that we may begin to meet again. We begin with happy spirits. We'll continue those happy spirits with two evening programs following tonight's main event. You can join the camp song leaders from the last five decades for a virtual campfire, or perhaps you'll be able to hear a bit more from some of the comedians the jokes that may have been a little salty for our main event. Speaking of timing, tonight's main program will run about an hour and 15 minutes. With that, we would like to introduce our MC, coming to us from Mercer Island, Oi Baby producer and BB Camp parent, Rob Wolf. Welcome, Rob. All right, thank you, Jessica and Stacy, for kicking us off and for all the work that you did as co-chairs to make tonight possible. Again, my name is Rob Wolf, and I'll be your MC for tonight. I am a BB camper by marriage. Uh, many of you know my wife, Lisey Mezzestrano Wolf. Our kids, David and Sadie, have spent many happy summers at BB camp. Uh, so I'm very happy to celebrate with all of you tonight. Uh, BB camp is 100 years old, and we're going to have a proper in person centennial celebration next year. But tonight, we're gathered virtually because we still have so much to celebrate. First and foremost, camp is on this summer. Our kids and grandkids are gonna be back where they belong, getting dirty in the Gaga pit, boating on Devil's Lake, and Israeli dancing in the dining hall. So we have an awesome program for you tonight. Stand-up comic and BB Camp alumna, Amy Veltman is here. We'll also be entertained by some other comedians, Ian Carmel, Simon Kaufman, Matt Goldich, Andrew Goldstein, and guest appearances by actors, Sasha Ruiz, and paragon of 1970s Jewish sexiness, Elliot Gould. We uh, have some BB Camp superstars who will join us, including Tom Myers, leading us in the BB Camp anthem of We Can't Wait to See You Again. Before we get to all of that, I need to tell you more about the outstanding matching gift opportunity we have. 
All gifts tonight, up to $150,000, will be matched by the JCAMP 180 All Together Now Matching Grant Program and a group of local donors. If you're watching our thermometer, as soon as we hit $150,000, the matching grant will kick in and will meet our goal to raise $300,000 for camp tonight. We want to thank the Harold Grinspoon Foundation and these local donors for their generous support tonight. The Zidell Family Foundations, Bob and Rita Phillip, Howard and Linda Davis, David and Katie Gold, Martha Soltes, Robin Mara Schlachter, and Ken and Mary Unkelis. Thank you so much for your support. All gifts tonight will be matched thanks to these tremendous BB Camp supporters. Please give them a round of applause from wherever you're watching. Coming in a few minutes, the Schneiderman sisters, who you might remember from the hit children's music series, Oi Baby, will lead us in Havdalah. But first, we have a message from one of the U.S. Senators from the great state of Oregon, Senator Ron Wyden. BB Camp is a time for retelling great stories and catching up with friends from far and wide, still in the midst of all the laughs and all the smiles, I'm going to be serious for just a moment. Everybody knows when looking back on a hundred wonderful years of BB Camp that its achievements for generations of Jewish kids are actual and long-lasting. Even during this most challenging past year, BB Camp has stood tall as a pillar in our Jewish community, just as it has for the past century. BB Camp's list of accomplishments is incredible. And just one of the many that stands out in the BB Camp spirit of Tikkun Olam is that the camp has served more than 200,000 meals to kids who are hungry and folks who are still dealing with wildfires in Lincoln County. And you do so much more for the Jewish community and the community at large. So as the camp approaches the end of the second century campaign for future generations of campers, I want everybody to know I'm sending a flag flown over the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. to BB Camp. Here's to another great hundred years of BB Camp building on an even stronger Jewish community. Thank you, Senator Wyden. What a special presentation for BB Camp's 100th anniversary. That flag will be raised by generations of campers to come, including this summer. Speaking of this summer, we already have 450 campers registered for overnight camp. I'm so excited to be, for camp to be alive again with the sound of their laughing and singing. As we're gathering on Saturday night, please welcome Lisa Kim and Stephanie Schneiderman as they lead us in the Havdalah prayer to close Shabbat. If you've had the pleasure of spending a Shabbat at BB Camp, as you join us tonight, imagine the beauty of lighting the Havdalah candle with hundreds of campers singing along while the sun sets over Devil's Lake. For those of you who RSVP'd early, you should have received the Havdalah candle and spices in your packet. Please grab those and join us for Havdalah. I believe there's a link in the chat uh, to the lyrics if you need, if you need it. Lie, 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 lie,
来来来来来来来来来来来来，巴鲁哈塔阿多奈埃罗伊努。Wow, they, they've still got it. Uh, best sibling trio this side of the Bee Gees. Thank you, Stephanie, Kim, and Lisa. Your voices are as beautiful as always. So if you've been to a BB Camp fundraiser before, or any fundraiser for that matter, you know how these things usually go. We'll talk about how wonderful the organization is, and then at the end, someone comes on to make the ask. We're not gonna do that tonight. Instead, we're gonna welcome your generosity all night long. At any time during tonight's program, you can give to BB Camp as we pursue our goal of $150,000. Remember, every gift is match, matched, and when we reach our $150,000 goal, the full match will kick in. There is a link on the screen where you can make your donations. The processing is managed by a company called GiveButter, which BB Camp has used for its secure, trusted donations for several events now. You, you can also make a donation by texting the word BB Bash to the number 202 858 1233. And if for some reason you're not comfortable donating through either of these methods, please contact our development director, Aaron Perlman, and he can help you make alternate arrangements. In a minute, we'll hear from our first comedian. But first, let's thank our donors at the remarkable $10,000 level. Yes, we have two donors at the $10,000 level. Jason Waxman and the Stern Leichner Foundation at $10,000. Thank you so much. Uh, Jason tells us he had to stretch this year to give $10,000, and he asks that you do the same when you think about your support. If you were going to give $100, think about $250. If you were going to give $180, think about $360. And the second gift from the Stern Leichner Foundation is in honor of Jonathan Berlin, who worked at camp with Jessica and Stacy. If you are able to match their donations of $10,000, please do so now. 
But we know it's not just gifts of $10,000 that are going to get us to our goal. Every gift at every level makes a difference, and you can start giving right now. I'd also like to thank our three donors at the $5,000 level. Marty Schnitzer, Leon Howard Lazarus, and uh, Lee Lazarus is a BB Camp board member, so thank you for that as well. And Skip and Angie Weiland, $5,000 all the way from Georgia. Skip worked at camp for one summer in 1979 and loves our work with inclusion. If you'd like to match this $5,000, $500, or $50, please click on the donation link on the event page or text the word BB Bash to 202 858 1233. Now, while you're giving, let's get to some entertainment. Amy Veltman grew up in Portland, and she is now a stand-up comedian in New York, where she lives with her husband and her two daughters, both BB campers. Let's give Amy a big BB camp welcome. Hi, I'm Amy Veltman. I'm a stand-up comic. I live in New York. I grew up in Portland, and I literally would not be here if it weren't for BB camp. No, literally. Uh, my mom grew up as a BB camper and uh, then she was a unit head and she was waiting to get on the bus that summer. And she said to her friend, Leslie, who's that guy with the great legs? Leslie was disgusted. It was her brother. And when I heard about this story, I was disgusted because now he's my father. Uh, though it was really interesting to learn my mom's a leg man. Who knew? So before the week was up, they knew that they would marry. I am a third generation BB camper. My kids are fourth generation. My grandma, Ray Honio, got a scholarship to attend BB camp from Neighborhood House when her family was really new to this country. I'm going to show you how long ago I was a camper by showing you my camp pictures. I bet there are people watching this that don't even know what this is. Uh, my favorite counselor at camp, she wore essential oils that she told me she got in downtown Portland at the Galleria. She played guitar. She was so magical. Uh, I loved music and I loved singing. When I was a fifth grader, we didn't have shows like American Idol. And so the camp talent show was really my big chance to get discovered. Uh, and so I sang the song, You Light Up My Life, while a friend simultaneously did it in sign language. Uh, it's kind of strange. No record contract. Very surprising. Uh, my family is not very athletic. I'm especially not athletic. My favorite part of camp was always menuha, rest hour. Later, after being a camper for several years, I was a counselor, a junior counselor, in a cabin of 14-year-old girls. And that was the summer I learned that there's nothing more cruel in the world than a cabin of 14-year-old girls. It's awful. They're smart enough to notice everything that's wrong with you, but not smart enough to keep it to themselves. Uh, it's it's really bad. And I had forgotten about this hard-won wisdom for so long until this year when my daughter turned 14. Um, I asked her how my outfit looked for the BB bash, and she said, you look like Liza Minnelli. That's great, I said. Liza Minnelli is a consummate entertainer. No, she said. Liza Minnelli now. I do not know if I can make it for the rest of this summer in this cabin. Get me out. Uh, BB Camp has given my kids formative experiences like this one. So I'm going to read a little letter from my daughter, Lucy. Uh, we'll start in the middle. Also, that girl, Zoe, is the one that I said threw a bag at my face. In other news... My pinky toenail fell off recently because I stubbed it really hard twice during the first few days at camp. Also, I would like to get serious and tell you about something that we probably all, Lucy, mom, dad, will be disappointed about. So there's this wall on this thing with cubbies in it in our cabin and lots of people scratch messages into it. So... Using bad judgment, I carved in Lucy, second sesh, 
and a few other girls carved their names too. When everyone was finished, our counselor said that if somebody saw what we did, we would have to pay $50, each of us, which scared me and still is scaring me. Anyway, if somebody does see, I am willing to pay $50 for my actions, but I'm worried more about how you will punish me. Anyway, on to a different subject. I realized that family is my number one priority at camp because of my severe homesickness. Mm, parentheses, just realized that makes it sound like I'm trying to get you not to yell at me about the 50 buck wall thing, which I promise you I am not doing. Oh, there's more, but I'll spare you. Um, wow, wow, wow. So camp does really provide formative experiences for kids in cultivating Jewish guilt. You know, my dad has also um, created a lot of formative experiences for some BB campers. Uh, I believe that he circumcised almost half the boys' side. Uh, okay, so in other news, um, I want you to know, if you're a parent who hasn't sent your kids to camp a lot, that a lot of times they only write to you when things aren't going well. Um, but if you don't hear from them, you have hope. Here's another letter from Lucy. Hi, Mom. If I could have one wish, it would be to leave. This place is horrible. I miss you so, so, times infinity, much. Nobody's really that nice, et cetera, et cetera, about some people. I'm not going to mention them. Okay. Later the same day, OMG, loving camp. Uh, dinner was delicious. Pasta, Caesar salad, garlic bread. Later, right before bed, I have a lump in my throat. And every time I swallow, it tastes sour like barf. I miss you so much. And I can't survive the next three weeks without you. Well, guys, she survived the next three weeks without us. Um, she's home now. And I'll have you know that she's parlayed those writing skills into a college acceptance. So it really does all turn out. Uh, I want you to know that our other daughter um, had even stronger ties to camp and her sister than her parents, which is why we only heard from her once the previous, the last summer that she went. Um, you know how they have to write a letter to get into dinner one night. Uh, so here's the letter she wrote to her sister, not to her mother. Dear Lucy, camp is fun. I miss you. I don't know what else to write. Oops, Eliza. Anyway, I want to thank BB Camp for my life, my existence, so many fun summers, taking care of my kids for a couple summers, uh, taking care of my parents, getting them together, but having rules against too much getting together. And I urge you to support BB Camp and the great things it's doing to, to give our kids great experiences, formative ones. Amy, thank you very much for that. It's funny stuff. Um, I'm glad to see I wasn't the only one who showed up in something sparkly tonight. Uh, and four generations of BB campers is just amazing. So that was that was really great. Uh, I've also been asked to inform you after Amy's routine that carving names was more of an old cabin thing. There's absolutely no carving of names in our beautiful new cabins. There are, however, lots of power outlets in them. In a moment, we'll hear from the BB Camp president and the CEO. But before we move on, I would like to thank our next level of donors. Omets Lev means courage, and it's one of the key values we teach campers. At the Omets Lev level of $3,600, I want to recognize uh, these folks. Um, Gerald Blauer went to BB Camp in the 1930s, and she would like to honor the memory of her husband, Henry Blauer, with this gift. She also asked us to mention that she is watching tonight with her friend, Ken Gurian. Ken just celebrated his 95th birthday, and he is pretty sure he is the most senior BB Camp alumni attending our event. 
Gene Newmark, another multi-generation family. Gene is donating uh, in honor of the entire Newmark family. Gail Schnitzer Romain also joins us at the $3,600 level, helping to meet the match provided partially by her sister, Rita Phillip. And BB Camp, uh, and as these donations are rolling in, uh, we hope you'll join in the giving. Just click on the link on the web page or text the word BB Bash to 202 858 1233. And when you send that text, you'll receive text back with uh, further instructions. BB Camp builds friendships for life. Uh, I should know I married into a whole bunch of those friendships. Uh, Havarut are friendships. And at the $1,800 Havarut level, we would like to recognize the following donors. Uh, and they're, they're there on your screen. Uh, Jason and Allison Kaufman, uh, uh, Clapper Hickey Family Fund, Howard and Wendy uh, Liebrich Family Fund, Irving and Arlene Potter, Kyle and Becky Rotenberg, Stan and Pam Rotenberg, and Kurt and uh, Kathy Shinen. Thank you so much for, for that gift. Uh, and we have three new gifts of, of $1,800 tonight. Um, Steve and Deborah Wynn, thank you very much. Steve Rosenberg and Ellen Lippman, Michael and Chris Feeves, and Lacey and Rob Wolf. All right, thank you all. All right, uh, we are also just heard that uh, Gerald's counselor, Sue Friedman, is also watching tonight. So thank you, thank you, Sue, for watching. Okay, um, so as we look forward to friendships being built at overnight camp this summer, please con continue making your gifts now. So still to come, more segments from our comedians and a huge BB Camp announcement coming at the end of the evening. What is it? I don't know. They haven't even told me. Now, I would like to introduce BB Camp board president Gary Kahn to give us a BB Camp update, and that will be followed by a short video and some stories from our amazing CEO, Michelle Copeland. Hello and welcome. I'm Gary Kahn, and I have the distinct pleasure of being the president of the board of B'nai B'rith Camp. I wanna thank you all for joining us tonight. It promises to be a fun evening. As an aside, I did not go to BB Camp as a child as I grew up in another part of the country, but I met my wife at Camp Wise in Cleveland, which is a sister camp of this. So I have a soft spot in my heart for camp. Since I have been on the board, one thing that has continued to impress me is the quality and talent of our staff. Last summer, due to the pandemic, we were not allowed to operate our overnight camp. As disappointing as that was, it did not stop us from continuing our mission to provide quality Jewish programming to the community. Last summer, we operated four day camps in Portland, Seattle, and at our camp on the coast, serving a total of 613 children. This year, we plan to add a camp on the east side of Portland. You'll be hearing more about that soon. Although the pandemic took overnight camp away, it provided a different kind of opportunity. The school district in Lincoln County, where camp is located, provided lunches for children eligible for that program. When everything shut down, the school district stopped providing those lunches. The state then contracted with us to take over the program, and we have continued to do that to this day. As you all know, last September, Oregon suffered a series of devastating forest fires, one of which was in the vicinity of the camp and displaced hundreds of families. The Federal Emergency Management Agency housed those families in local hotels and other lodgings, and then contracted with us to provide three meals a day for those families. We continue to provide three meals a day to many of those families. Between the school lunches and the FEMA program, we have served over 200,000 meals to date, and that number increases every day. As I mentioned at the outset, we have a tremendous staff but I wanna give a special shout out to Michelle Copeland, our seemingly tireless CEO. In addition to the myriad of other tasks, last year she took on more responsibility. She was instrumental in forming the Alliance of Oregon Camps and serves as its chair. The Alliance includes all licensed Oregon overnight camps and worked to secure state fundings for camp operations and to encourage the state to allow camps to operate safely this summer. Through the hard work of Michelle and others, the state has so far approved $11.5 million for camps, and that number will increase. Thank you, Michelle. Once again, thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. I hope it will be a fun evening for all, and I encourage everyone to be as generous as possible. Thank you. Hello. Hello. 
Campers rough and ready we are to share Ruach and our love for BB. Big time losses, had us spitzing, but all you were really listening. Got some grandstand, also loners, but what really saved us was our steadfast donors. Camp is ready. New construction, hundredth year up, real production. Camp is on it. We'll see our friends. Dear Niyatsu, we can't wait to see you again. Good evening, everyone. I love the Hella Mudda, Hella Fada BB Cam parody. Thank you to those of you that made it come to life. My name is Michelle Copeland and I'm the CEO of BB Camp. Thank you for joining us at the BB Camp Bash. As I begin tonight, I would be remiss not to thank our tireless lay leadership and professional staff for their relentless work to show up for our community during such a challenging year. When people needed comfort the most, our BB Camp team created innovative opportunities for engagement. A special thank you and acknowledgement to Jordana Levnick, our former BB Camp board president, and to Gary Kahn, our current board president, for all of their hard work. And thank you, Gary, for your very kind remarks. And thank you to our Benebeth Men's Camp chairman of the board and president, Irv Potter and Kyle Rotenberg. Typically, I would ask our staff and our board to stand so that we can recognize your amazingness. So please, tonight, raise your glass in their honor. Thank you as well to all of our sponsors of tonight's virtual bash, to our matching gift donors, and to our chairs and my former BB Camp Summer Camp staff, Jessica Rothstein Berger, coming to us from Connecticut, and Stacy Van Wagner, coming to us from Tacoma. Thank you both so very much. As you heard from Gary, this year has profoundly affected BB Camp's service to the community. Despite the challenges, our Kahila, our community, staff, and lay leadership came together to provide for our children, our friends and our neighbors, creating lines of connections, really building community. I wanna share three stories with you, highlighting inclusivity of Jewish values as our guide. BB Camp touched lives with our resilient and forward thinking approaches to programming for our community. One of BB Camp's volunteer delivery drivers who has delivered many of the over 200,000 free meals we have served to food insecure children and wildfire survivors, shared this very sweet story from her holiday delivery in December. Britt met sixth grader Emmett while delivering free meals for BB Camp's food program. Since Britt does door-to-door -door meal drop off, Emmett started showing up daily to help her out. Britt and Emmett became fast friends. With the holidays around the corner, Britt arranged with Emmett's family to meet at the outlet mall so that Emmett could pick out a toy for each of his siblings for the holidays and something special for himself. 
As you can imagine, Emmett was thrilled and his family was incredibly appreciative. Britt and her husband, with help from the Neighbors for Kids, generously purchased the toys. Britt shared that Emmett is a great kid and one that she calls her friend. She loves that this was an example of one more way that BB Camp connects people to help each other. At BB Camp, we teach Tukun Olam, repairing the world. We are full of gratitude to Britt and all of our volunteers for their kindness, their volunteerism, and help in repairing the world. Thank you, Britt. This year, among my many proud moments, has been my work in chairing the Alliance of Oregon Camps. As you heard, on behalf of the 150 Oregon Camps, the Alliance has secured from the state $11.5 million so far and has, has worked with the governor's office and the Oregon Health Authority in creating guidance for camps. Last week, a camp director colleague in tears shared with me that the funds we have been able to procure have allowed their camp to provide two weeks of camp to low-income children for free. I'm so delighted that our efforts have helped so many. And as you can imagine, I am over the moon that camps have been approved to open this summer. And lastly, I'd like to talk about the success of our BB day camps. Our day camp programs had incredibly positive effects on the mental health of campers and staff this past summer. Many of you may know Liz Phillips. Liz's oldest daughter worked at our BB Day Camp Portland and her younger daughter was part of the inaugural pop-up middle school day camp in Portland as well. Liz was brought to tears when sharing how much BB Camp meaningful, meaningfully impacted her family. Liz shared this with me, Liz, Liz shared the, this email with me, which I thought was so beautiful, I have to share with you. She writes, Late last spring, our daughter Bella asked for our permission to apply to be a BB day camp counselor. While normally we would have been overjoyed at this prospect, at that moment, life was anything but normal. Three months into the pandemic, our world had shrunk. Her schooling was minimal, her interactions with others dwindling. Our typically vivacious, happy adolescent had become quiet and sad. There seemed to be nothing for her to look forward to. She craved normalcy, human interaction, and happiness. While we were nervous about letting her do this, we knew she needed something. While our decision to allow her to work seemed in direct opposition to the rules and guidelines we had set out as a family, we trusted BB Camp to navigate the complexities of our present world and keep her safe. In our minds, working as a camp counselor would give Bella structure and allow her to have something to do each day, two things she desperately needed. In truth, that was all we were expecting and all that we hoped for. But what she actually received was so much more. BB Camp provided Bella with a lifeline. It gave her purpose. It provided her joy. It gave her human interaction and laughter and friendship. It made her a leader and taught her the importance of being a team player. It made her feel vital and important, needed and appreciated. But mostly, it gave her a community, the very thing she needed most. And while it may sound a town, it may sound a tad a dramatic, we believe that BB Camp saved our daughter. It replaced the sadness and fear that had loomed large and happiness and hope. And most importantly, it reminded her that good can be found even in the darkest of times. And I know firsthand the impact that Bella made on our campers as my daughter Lizzie loved Bella as her BB Day Camp counselor. I'm so sorry, I didn't realize I would get so teary. Bella was fantastic and did amazing work with, with Lizzie. Thank you, Bella. There are the type, these are the types of experiences we gave to the 613 campers who following COVID-19 mitigated protocols shared the simple, the passion and magic of BB Camp in our four BB Day Camp programs, including our two day camps hosted at Congregation Beth Israel in Portland and our BB Day Camp in partnership with the Strom JCC and the Seattle area. Plus our established BB Day Camp in Lincoln City on our own campus. These are the experiences that BB Camp has given to our community for the last 100 summers. And these are the experiences we will provide this summer when our overnight camp returns, when we again can sing Avenu Shalom Alechem as our campers ride the bus into camp. These are the types of experiences our staff will reflect on a night after Friendship Circle and the experiences our campers will remember for life when they make a new friend on Shabbat, 
a friend that they will grow up with, a friend that they will work at camp with, and a friend that they will have for life. I'm ecstatic for the summer to begin. For many of us, it was excruciating not to have overnight camp last year. Your gifts will assure that we will have the best summer ever in 2021, and that we'll be able to welcome all campers, no matter their ability to, to join us. Please consider doing all that you can to help us reach our match this evening. My uncle Milt, as, you, as many of you may have remembered him, would remind you to give all that you can, stretch a little bit, and then just give a little bit more. We know BB Camp and the community connections are needed now more than ever. Thank you all again for joining us tonight and investing in our community's future leaders and our future connections. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, Michelle. It's so good to hear all those stories. And we know there are countless stories like them uh, from the past hundred years of BB Camp. Um, we should all be so proud to be associated with this organization, um, especially the way it's adapt adapted this year and, and all the changes it's made. It's also great to hear from Gary as well. Um, and it was great to hear a shout out for Camp Wise. I went there too. It's the finest Jewish summer camp in all of Northeast Ohio. Uh, friends, this is where the rubber meets the road. Um, we are now at $126,724 and just have over $23,000 away uh, from our goal. Uh, we can get there in the next few minutes. If you haven't done so already, this is your chance to take us across the finish line. Click the donate button now or text BB Bash to 202 858 1233 to make your donation. If you happen to be watching this on Facebook, we'll put the link in the comments uh, in the video as well. I want to tell you about our next giving levels. Uh, Takun Alam, or Repairing the World, is what we teach our campers. And these donors gave at the 1,080 to Kuno Lam level. Michelle and Jay Bihar, Mia Burke and Glenn Koblenz, Geffen Mesher, Steve Cantor and the Cantor family, Michelle and Lauren Copeland, Ruben and Elizabeth Menasha, Miles Newmark and Barbara Gilbert, Jen Singer, Jeff and Sherry Weinstein, Michael Wall and Wendy Weissman. Thank you so much. And we have some, some more that have just come in. John and Carol Arnsberg, Linda and Buzz Bernstein, Barbara Crandell, I'm sorry, uh, Crandall, Kim Fusan, Priscilla and Tony Costner, David and Maddie Reichenstein, Dan and Janice Pittman. Thank you very much for your gifts. Another donation level is named for the Hebrew word for joy, Simcha. At the $613 Simcha level, we would like to recognize these donors. Congregation Beth, Beth Israel, Joey and Val Fishman, Robert and Leslie Glasgow, uh, Amy Veltman's aunt and uncle, who she mentioned earlier, Gabe Goldberg and Willie Mullins, Jamie and Dan Hogland, Gary and Joan Kahn, Jordana and Ryan Levnick, Ruth Lindemann, Anna Pinedo, Ryan and Sarah Pittman, Sasha, Sasha Reich and Aaron Perlman, Marla and Robert Wiener. Thank you very much for your gifts. And if we're going to see if we can get to the goal with our donors at $500, let's, let's recognize these donors as well. Um, the $500 level, we had Jamie and Denise Schulman, Stuart Kronick, Glenn and Lisa Levy, Tacoma Jewish Community Fund, Gordon and Sandra Perlman, Jason Pittman, Dick and Cameron Davis. And Sue Perkle made a donation of $540 in memory of Zanley and Sylvia Perkle. Thank you very much for that donation. All right, let's continue on. Um, we, we, are, we are tantalizingly close to that $150,000 mark. Um, so, so if you have an opportunity, if you haven't done so yet, uh, click on the link, text the, text the number, and you can uh, continue giving your, your donation. At this point, um, let's see, let's, what are we going to do next? We're going to go to comedians, I believe. Let's, let's go to our comedians. Let's take a look at those. Kyle W. Rotenberg, attorney at law. August 12th, 1993. Dear favorite stepdaughter, right, love, Kyle. P.S. So what's new? How is camp? I bought a new car. It is a Ford Taurus SHO model. It is dark green with the same interior as the Explorer. It has a CD player and a sunroof. It is a great car. Even your mom thinks it's beautiful. It has 
two airbags, anti-lock brakes like the Explorer, and you will see it in a couple weeks. Take care of yourself. I heard that you were still coughing. Get some rest. Say hi to Rick. Hi guys, my name is Sasha Roys. I'm gonna read you a letter from a very happy young camper. Hello, mom. In the letter, I will be telling the folks at home what I'm doing, LOL. I don't know if I can fit that much fun on one card, but here I go. I'm much less homesick this year, and both Shabbats were fun so far, although the hug line was awkward. Tubing was lots of fun too. Wow, I'm running out of space. I guess read part of dad's card. So mom and dad, camp is awesome in every way. Please write me a letter with Bapa's address and stuff. Anyway, I love you. Please write me back. Love, Colin. Clearly Colin had a great time and I must admit I'm a little envious because I personally had never had the experience or pleasure of going to Jewish camp. I mean, I worked at a camp owned by a Jewish man, but I don't think that's quite the same thing. So if ever there's a uh, Jewish camp for middle-aged men who want to relive their youth, please do let me know. Have a great summer. Bye-bye. Kyle W. Rotenberg, attorney at law, August 3rd. 1994. Dear favorite stepdaughter. Well, seems like you're having a good time. Although one letter with three lines does not give us much information. Do you have counselors? Do you have others in your cabin? Is your neck okay? I don't know. These might have been questions you could have answered. In a letter. Nothing much is going on here. Your brother has been calling down the stairs for you. He thought he heard you the other day, and he was screaming for you. We almost bought you a Beatles poster from the poster shop in Washington Square. Maybe next time. How's your cousin Stephanie doing? Is she meeting new people? Has she become Jewish yet? Do you see Rick at all? Well, I gotta go. Right soon. Love. Kyle. Yeah. You know, for the purposes of this, we uh, went to a camp called Ramah in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Yes. You were a year older than me. And we and didn't we, really, we, we didn't weren't really, really know friends as campers. Yeah. We, we not that we were, people. not that we were enemies. No. But we just didn't, and we didn't have uh, occasion to really interact. But I think in, in many ways, we both served the same role in our, in our respective age group of like being the sort of comedic mascot and so then later when we met as we were counselors in the same bunk we sort of, we got we clicked immediately but the the um the asterisk on that is that i was the counselor you were the junior counselor but we right. also had another junior counselor yes um but the responsible one yeah yeah he we, basically um did most of the heavy lifting and then yes. you and i were like playing 20 questions and you know uh yeah. you know poking fun at the campers. Kyle W. Rodenberg, attorney at law, July 30th, 1996. Dear favorite stepdaughter, Chad and Joel called Love Kyle. P.S. How's everything going? Does Abby like camp? Do you like being an LIT? How is the food? How does camp look? What cabin are you helping with? Did Kelsey lobby and move to Teen Village? Has Stephanie kissed any boys yet? Has the weather been okay? Are you having headaches? Have you met anyone new? Did your mom write yet? How are the counselors? Nothing new here. Spencer is at the dentist and your mom is mom. Pretty normal stuff. We'll write soon. Welcome. I've been asked to say a few words about B'nai B'rith camp. Now I never went to B'nai B'rith camp, but I did go to summer camp as a kid. I went to Sephardic Adventure Camp in Shelton, Washington, Mecca of the Great Northwest. And I have a lot of fond memories. Probably some of my most fondest memories from my childhood are from summer camp. I did grow up in Seattle. I had a unique upbringing. No, this is not a New York accent. This is a white Jewish Northern Rainier Beach dialect. That's right. I grew up in a small genetic subgroup of the population of Polish shtetl Jews who settled in the Alaskan Way projects after World War II. And now you have me. Yeah, like a soul Jew. Right. Like the fourth beastie boy. 
rolling through city blocks with two glocks, a tub of cream cheese, two pounds of locks, a double dozen of bagels and some turntables. Word. Ah, oh. but man, I tell you, summer camp back to summer camp. Some of the best times, but that was different. Things were different when I was a kid. I really feel like that. You know, when I went to summer camp, you could drink from a water hose without dying. Does anybody remember that before water hoses started killing you or something? You could touch a tree. You didn't need hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah. When I went to camp, things were different. If you want to know what extreme chaos looks like, just put 140 Sephardic Jewish middle schoolers in the middle of the woods for three weeks. That is chaos. If we were ever conquered by an invading nation, just we would send them away. They'd be like, look. We can't take it anymore. We're getting out of here. We were nuts, nuts, crazy kids. It's so much fun because it's like one of the first times in your life you have no parental authority and you get a chance to come into your own self, be a wild, crazy kid. But you want to hear something? It was one of the funnest times of my life, summer camp. And when I look back in my life and I think what connects me to Judaism the most, it was summer camp. And several years ago, the federations did a they funded a study and they went to Jewish adults and they wanted to know what was it that connects you to Judaism? Was it your Hebrew school? Was it your bar bat mitzvah training? What is it? And what the study said overwhelmingly was that the number one way to get a kid to be connected to their own Judaism when they're older, later in life, is summer camp. Because you live it. It's one thing, okay, you go to a bar mitzvah class, it takes an hour, you go home. You go to Hebrew high for a few hours, then you go home, right? Let's say you go spend a Shabbat weekend with someone at a Shabbaton, okay, great, but then you go home. But at summer camp, it's all day, every day, you and your brethren, and everyone around you, and you're immersed in it, and it's so much fun, and it's the number one way to create emotional positive association with your Judaism. So on that note, thank you for letting me chop it up for two minutes, and I really support everything you all are doing, and please continue to donate, send your kids, we'll send them back, hopefully, and uh, yeah, thank you. Kyle! W. Rotenberg, attorney at law, June 30, 1998, dear favorite stepdaughter, ellipses. On a happy note, I have a secret to tell you that you only have to keep for around a week. I am being honored as man of the year at men's camp. I think I am the youngest they have had. Try not to tell anyone because it is a very small world and someone may tell someone who is overheard by someone, and Portland would soon know. The brochure is supposed to go out, so you won't have to keep it long. I will call and tell you when it is okay to speak. You will be able to drink your tea out of my picture mug. Won't that be special? Love, Kyle. Uh, you talked about Yom Doar Mail Day, where you had to send the letter home. So Dave decided before, I think it was our show of theme summer, that he was going to, he had written envelopes and sealed them with no note. So I he mean, had, he had his the eight, pack. he had his eight, um, he had his eight letters ready for the eight weeks of camp because uh, Rama was, was eight weeks all the way through. Um, so he sent, you know, he sent one a week, about four weeks into the summer, he gets a package. He is so, you know, we're, at any time you can get a package at camp, you know, some parents figured out a way to get contraband in there, which was exciting. Um, so anyway, he gets a package, empty. Uh, it's very funny. Wendy Light sent him back the completely empty package. Um, you got to love the ironic parent. I never got packages. My parents, uh, ne it was just not, a, I got postcards. That was it. Like my mom, my mom read the directions that Ramah sent out as like letter of the law. So I showed up <laughs> my first summer with like all white, uh, you know, like it was Friday Shabbat. Night for Shabbat and everybody's dressing with like their coolest outfits. And I had white shorts, you know, mid thigh and a white polo because that's what the camp packing list 
called for. Uh, uh, Avi Orlo always talked about the, you know the the kind of Shabbat sniglets that like small oh, moment. It's my where, favorite conversation. Yeah, yeah. So um, just for me, that moment of like you know when you're all sitting as an ada or when you're you're sitting as a camp and services are are you know you're about to do the amida and everybody stands up at once. The and sound then the, that, that makes. Yeah, yeah, the sound that of was always the Avi Orlo thing was what's the sound? I just remember this again, like before I was even a camper, I noticed this because again, my mom always went by the letter of what the 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 itinerary said, and her she didn't bring food up on on um, visiting day. We went to the camp provided lunch in the in the Chararochel, and so uh, you know, there's there's um, the blessings after the meal so anyway it was always in my head but um to me the the collective voice of the camp doing uh the beer zone after the meal doesn't matter what summer it was who's at camp um the sound the collective voice always sounds like the same voice does that make sense kyle w rodenberg attorney and law July 27, 2015, dear favorite grandson. How is everything going? Grandma Bopa and Grandma Norma are sending you something today, but I thought I would write you anyway. The weather looks like it was cool over the weekend with a little rain. The rest of this week should be perfect. Real hot in Portland on Wednesday through the weekend. I hope you were getting a chance to go tubing and enjoy the lake. How is the new zip line? Probably is a lot of fun to go across the ball field. I hear the food has been very good this year. Becky, the cook, is very good. I can't believe my camp is only a couple of weeks away. Also, Disneyland is just about four weeks away. Gonna be a fun August. Are you in the same cabin as last year? Who are your counselors? Write me and let me know. Don't forget sheets on your bed, brush your teeth, underwear, and soap and shampoo in the shower. I love you, Papa. Hey bud, hope camp is going well. It gets better every day, trust me. How is living in a cabin? When you get back, you just might be strong enough to beat me up, but I want you to know I'll be training every day too. See you soon. Love, Uncle Spencer. I never went to a summer camp. My parents would take me to the Catskill Mountains every year, and sometimes we'd stay at a Kochelein. Now, a Kochelein is a place where families would go and have a room or a bungalow and have a common kitchen where everybody would cook in the same kitchen. Maybe I'll get to go to a good Jewish camp like B'nai B'rith of Aragon. I hope so. Kyle W. Rotenberg. Attorney at law. Hello, mother. Hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. Camp is very entertaining. And they say we'll have some fun if it stops raining. All the counselors hate the waiters. And the lake has alligators. Love, Kyle. All right, that was great stuff. And I hope that Kyle W. Rotenberg, attorney at law, was watching that. Um, I really wish we had a camera on you to record your recording, your your reactions during uh, Ian's recordings and readings. That was that was good stuff. Okay, so um, I want to recognize, uh, continue recognizing our wonderful donors tonight. Um, we are at one hundred thirty-two thousand dollars. $18,000 to go to go to reach, we reach our goal of $150,000. And we, our next level of giving is the Shalom level at $360. We have a huge number of donors. You can read the names on the screen here, but uh, I want to, I want to give them a shout out as well. Um, they are uh, Jerry Bard, Jessica Rothsteinberger and Ben Berger, Bill Brenner and Julia Waco, Mike and Barbie Enkelis, Gordon Hopner family, Margie Jacobson and Lowell uh, Levinson, Lou and Kathy Jaffe, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Copeland, Bob Mendelson, Alexander Milky and Sarah Morton, Jordan and Debbie Planner, Susan and Stuart Schleifer, Linda and Gary Singer, Stacy and Nathan Van Wagener, 
Bruce and Susan Winthrop, Dion and Scott Zachs, Eric Nichols, Nicolason, Lou and Kathy Jaffe, Michael and Kathy Weiner, Michael Simon, Julie and Tom Diamond. And thank you to these additional gifts of between $50 and $250. Nicole Lichtenstein uh, Valentine, 95 year young Ken Gurian, who I mentioned earlier, Aaron Jacobs, Tanya and Jason Morrow, Hada and Joel Mezzestrano, Leslie and Mark Russo, Mark Brenner, Julie Marglis of Oregon Jewish Museum, Faith Gal Galderisi, Leonard Ugi Krachevsky uh, of Blessed Memory. Leonard passed away just a few weeks ago and made sure his son sent in a check before he passed away. So thank you for that special donation. Nancy Gordon Swirling and Mark Swirling, Jack and Teresa Lippman, Adam Kettler, Steph Kotkins, uh, Shimon and Yulia uh, Sapinar, Meryl Hendon of PJA and Steve Serkin. Apologies if I got any of your name pronunciations wrong, but thank you all for those generous, generous donations. We now have lots and lots of donors uh, for this evening, and we're going to bring up this uh, the Give Butter site. You can just see as we scroll through uh, the number of uh, donations we have and so many great memories and so many uh, people that have a great feeling for camp. So if we can keep that going, we'll, we'll get all the way to our goal. Um, this, this community really knows about generosity. Thank you very much for your participation. Now let's get on with the show. Uh, so, um, for your information, uh, we have some other great moments and materials from the comedians that we'll be showing in a breakout room after the program is complete. Um, there's some funny stuff that we cut out, especially from Simon Kaufman and uh, many more stories from Matt and Andrew. And after the program, if you stay in this room, there will be campfire songs from five decades of camp song leaders, starting with Stephanie Schneiderman. As 2021 is BB Camp's 100th anniversary, uh, though we postponed the big celebration, we want to enjoy this 100th anniversary slideshow, and that will be followed by Irving Potter with our big announcement. All my life's a circle, sunrise and sundown. Moon rolls through the nighttime till the daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle, but I can't tell you why. Seasons spinning round again, the years keep rolling by. Like I've been here before I can't remember when But I have this funny feeling That we'll all be together again No straight lines make up my life And all my roads have bends There's no clear-cut beginnings And so far no Yes, you've done the same But then we lose each other It's like a children's game Lines of Connection has been the perfect theme for tonight's celebration. Tonight, my line runs to Palm Desert where I'm celebrating with a large group of former campers, men's campers, and part-time rejuvenators. My connections run all the way back to my first year as a BB camper, 1955. Back then, our cabins had shutters instead of windows, a single light bulb in the center of the cabin, and certainly no running water, showers, or bathrooms. Today's BB camp facilities are a far cry from those earlier days. 
Today, we are less than one year away from completing our 10-year second century campaign to totally rebuild the camp's facilities, keeping all that makes BB Camp so special just with beautiful new buildings. Since we started out to bring the vision of our 10-year master plan to fruition, we've replaced the old dining hall, built a new health center, added the Merkaz Community Center, added the Lakeside Lodge, and eight beautiful new camper residential buildings, each consisting of two separate cabins. This summer, each camper will be in a modern cabin with full ADA accessibility, two showers and modern plumbing, heating and air conditioning, plenty of plugs and modern lighting, with an outside deck large enough to hold all the cabin's campers. This summer's campers will also be able to gather in our beautiful new amphitheater and aquatic center and see the camp continuing to serve the few needs of our local community out of our soon to be completed auxiliary kitchen. To complete the plan, we now need to build our last planned new building, a new field house and recreation center. The old Zydell building, which the campers for some unknown reason called the Ulam Gadol, although it is anything but large, with a gym that is only about two th thirds the length of a standard high school gym and a small game area. The old building will be replaced by the new Zydell Hall, which will have a full-size multi-use gym and a fully ADA accessible game room in a mezzanine overlooking the gym floor. The existing north side shower house will be converted to serve as a locker room for the gym, allowing us to use the facility not only for our campers, but also for outside users and the local community. The construction cost for the new Zydell Hall is about $2.1 million. Up until this week, the Century Campaign has raised about $400,000 toward this final exciting camp treasure, including a $100,000 grant from the Foundation for Jewish Camps, Yashar Initiative, to help make the building accessible for all. This leaves us just 1.7 million away from our second century campaign goal of $14 million. It is so exciting to announce to you tonight that the Zydell family will rededicate their generosity to our camp field house with a new commitment of $500,000. Please join me in expressing our thanks for this wonderful commitment to the second century campaign. Now that we've celebrated a wonderful and generous commitment, I do have to tell you that it comes with a catch. This is a one for two match, meaning we need to match the Zydell family's commitment with at least $1 million of additional campaign contributions. And we have, to have just a few months to get it done. All of you here tonight are generous supporters of BB Camp. You have already commi made commitments to our program and I'm not gonna ask you today to make another camp, another gift. I am asking you to start thinking about what you can do to help beat the Zydell family's challenge. If you can make a new commitment to the hall over the one to five year period, you can help us make history and complete the second century campaign. Please think about this wonderful opportunity to seal a legacy for our campers, for this generation's children and for future generations to come. The lines of connection in our community are strong. Thanks to all of you here with your commitment and care. Thank you for all you do to ensure BB Camp will live on for many, many years to come. Stronger, more beautiful, and better than ever. Thank you all so much. Good evening, everyone. And to you, Irv, thank you very, very much for your kind words about the family gift tonight. Uh, BB Camp is something that is very important and meaningful to the Zydell family. I attended BB Camp 60 plus years ago. My son Jason attended there 30 plus years ago. And two years ago, the family had the joy and the pleasure of seeing our first granddaughter, Athena, going to BB Camp. Being their first year, she only signed up for one week. And in the middle of that week, she did something that I'm sure has never been done by any other camper. She wrote a note, sent it back to mom in Portland to Crystal, and the, and the note simply said, Mom, I'm having a great time. Can I go for three weeks next year? What a, what a terrific piece of mail to receive. Well, next year came and it was COVID time. 
And Athena was very, very disappointed that there was no camp attendance, but is very much forward, looking forward to attending this summer. Uh, I'm sure that Crystal's looking forward to her attending as well, but uh, uh, it's really Athena that's looking forward to it with great enthusiasm. Uh, camp is really important. All of the professional leadership, the the volunteer leadership, they do a terrific job running the camp. They do a great job with all of our kids. They have volunteer programs that, that help people that need help in Lincoln County. And it is simply a, a valuable, valuable institution for this community. And it is a pleasure to be able to support the camp as much as we have. Uh, we want to thank everybody that's attending tonight for what you've done this evening, what you've done in the past, and ask you to help us help the camp to finish up their capital campaign. Thank you and have a nice evening. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Irv, and thank you for your literal decades of leadership of BB Camp. You are a BB Camp legend. And thank you for that generous gift from Jay, Diane, and, Char and Charlene Zidell. Um, very quick announcement of our total dollars raised so far. We're at 134329 So we, uh, we are getting very, very close. Um, and we will update everybody Monday with the final number as the donations keep, keep rolling in. Um, I, I have a gift here that I want to... Um, announce uh, that it was so it was such a generous donation I, I had to text somebody I had to text Aaron to just make sure that I wasn't going to give the, the incorrect information we have a thirty six thousand dollar gift in memory of Marty Zell um, so thank you very much for that uh, I want to just uh, really shout that out and, and say how much we appreciate it um, and then are, are we gonna run the video I'm, I'm gonna need some help from from my producer here are we gonna run the video? From Winnie, are we going to turn back over to Jessica and Stacy? Let's let's run the video from Winnie. Hi, I'm Winnie Sandler Grinspoon, president of the Harold Grinspoon Foundation. Wow, it is amazing. Here you are, BB Cam, meeting the All Together Now 2021 Challenge. We are so excited for you. We knew you would do it. And because of your success, we are really excited to offer you a $10,000 bonus for having crossed the finish line. Isn't that something? We know you use the money well because you always do. We are so inspired by, by what you do, not only for the kids who get to experience BB Camp, but for the neighborhood and the way in which you help so many people in the state of Oregon and beyond. And we are also, of course, thrilled that you are the PJ Library Implementing Partner. I believe you're the only camp in the entire catchment of PJ Library who runs PJ Library. So we appreciate you, we respect you, and we thank you so much for everything you do for PJ Library and for all the kids that you and families that you serve. Thank you, thank you, and congratulations again. All right. Thank you very much uh, for that. So, so we did it with that that extra gift that that put us over the top. So um, it's great to have that that extra donation as well. So thank you very much uh, for that from the Grinspoon Foundation. Uh, so we are going to uh, continue updating these numbers as they roll in. Aaron Perlman will post something probably to the BB Camp Facebook page, um, giving the final numbers and everything at the at the end of the event. Um, but but folks, we did it, um, and I really appreciate everybody's contributions. Um, so uh, before we wrap up, I want to turn it over to Jessica and Stacy with a few final, and I'm not going to say the word, you know the word, uh, I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> hadayot and uh, turn it over to you. So thank you both for your beautiful uh, work here on this event, and over to you. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us tonight from all over the country and, and multiple countries all over the world. Um, thank you to our comedians and um, to all of our sponsors, our matching gift donors. I think I may be frozen, but that's a, a connectivity issue that we'll resolve by staying connected. Um, to Senator Ron Wyden and Winnie Sandler, a great joining us. 
And thank you, of course, to um, my stepfather for sending me to camp, um, Kyle W. Rotenberg. And I want to take a moment to thank Rob Wolf, our amazing MC, Scott Wasserman, our tech guru. We couldn't have done this night without you. To the Schneiderman sisters and to our professional staff partners, Stacey Levinson, Barb Gordon, Noah Rubin, and Aaron Perlman. We are so excited that you are all able to join us tonight and even more excited to come together as a community for the second century plus one BB Camp Bash next year on Saturday night, April 30th, 2022. Well, before um, next summer or next spring, rather, um, we have a bit more for tonight. If I am cutting out, Jessica, you just go ahead and interrupt me and you finish this. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we will have two breakout rooms tonight uh, in our post evening show. One will be a breakout room with a bit more from our comedians, uh, the feature Simon Kaufman um, from Seattle, who will include all the jokes that were not uh, fit to print, so to say. Um, and that'll be followed by a full replay of Amy Veltman's, in case you missed it. Um, a bit more from our other comedians. And I, I will tell you this, I just got a text from Spencer that said, oh my God, I, I love and I can't believe you read my letter. It was fantastic. Thank you again all for coming and thanks you so much for giving with a Nidibut Haleva, a generosity of spirit. Um, it means so much to me and my family, um, to my son and daughter, my son who is a camper for the last nine years, my daughter um, who is a staff alumni, myself as a staff alumni and uh, a parent and uh, to my entire family. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. And second, to wrap up, there will be a virtual campfire kicked off by Stephanie Schneiderman singing Leaving on a Jet Plane, a classic song to end the camp campfire, and followed by our song leaders from over the past five decades, including her sister, Kim Schneiderman, Marshall Powell, Jason Fellman, Ellie Rothschild, Tracy Combe Meislin, and many others. But before we end the evening, though, we have a very special treat for you. Tom Myers. Yes, Tom Myers of the Tom Song. Please join us in singing Tom Song, or as we better know it, we can't wait to see you again. Thank you all for coming, and we can't wait to see you again, hopefully next year at the, if not sooner. Hey, BB Campers. So glad to be with you tonight for this fundraiser. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I want you to all to sing along with me. If I go with the flow, my senses will leave me 
got this feeling never ends And I can't wait to see you again All right, I heard every one of you singing. Keep singing that song and spreading that BB Camp energy. I can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye, everybody. Shalom Aleinu, Odevo Shalom Aleinu, Odevo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'akulam. Odevo Shalom Aleinu, Odevo Shalom Aleinu, Odevo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'akulam. Salam, Aleinu Ve'akulam, Salam.